Always an absolute, it's an absolute I hate it. I, I have to create sub-plans. Yeah, I have to create plans for the next teacher study in tomorrow. And it takes me for for each class, it takes me about an hour to write something. So you have to spend four hours. Yeah, but I have two classes that are doubled up. I teach, teach science 20 twice. So that's not so bad, but it'll take me about three hours a day. Oh, is that why you only have one? Yeah, that's why there's the science 20, chem 20, chem 30, chem 20, and then I finish off the day with another science 20. Okay. Take out your 11.1 entropy notes, please. What did you burn yesterday? Some of you burnt a Cheeto, some of you burnt a Dorito, some of you burnt a cheesy puff thing, whatever. Yeah. Um, some of them burnt really well, some of them did not burn so well. And okay, that's fine. Okay, this is uh, the very last page on your 11.1 notes. Yeah, we're going to get a new notes package. So that's the third thing in the hand today. Fourth, technically, that's fine. Shh. A candle is burned for several minutes, just like you, just like you burned a Dorito, right? Or you burned uh, whatever. Um, so a candle is burned for several minutes to heat a can of water. The temperature of 100 milliliters of water changes from 16.4 degrees Celsius to 24.2 degrees Celsius. What is, what is the enthalpy change? Now remember, the enthalpy change of the water, the enthalpy change of the water is the exact same thing as the enthalpy change of the candle. Does that make sense? Any energy lost by the candle, we need to assume that all of it is gained by the water because this is some sort of a calorimetry experiment. So what is enthalpy measured in? Do you know? Jewels. Do you see jewels here anywhere? No. Ah, son of a gun. But we have water and we know how much energy it takes to change the temperature of water, right? So we're looking for enthalpy, that's delta H, and it's measured in uh, either kilojoules or joules, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Okay, I want to be uh, super clear about this. I'm, I'm going to kind of switch up, switch it up just a second, just like a little tiny bit. 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius. If, if, instead of joules, I could get kilojoules out of this. As long as I, if, if, I mean, I could get kilojoules out of this as long as I measured the mass of the water in kilograms. kilograms. Does that make sense? So, we could turn 100 milliliters into grams. What is 100 milliliters in grams? 100 milliliters. It's 100 grams. But what is 100 grams as a kilogram? Yeah, so if you're not good at metric conversions, this is going to be tough, right? Does anybody need me to go over how to convert between grams and kilograms? Okay, well, let, just let me know. Um, so this is 0 0.100 kilograms of water. And what was the temperature change between 16.4 and 25.2? 8.8 8 .8 degrees Celsius. Over one. You don't have to put over one, but uh, I do. <laughs> Oh, you need calculators. Yep. Anybody else need a calculator? Do you actually have a calculator up? You have a calculator, but it's not out. The two options are I, I throw a calculator at you, or you take it. 
Yeah, I, I want I want to show you this because I want you to keep it in mind because sometimes we have to cancel out kilojoules and so this will be this will be a good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that your your answer is going to be a thousand times bigger because it's in joules instead of kilojoules. That's all. Okay, what'd you get? What'd you get? Three point six nine. Three point six nine kilojoules. Perfect. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Okay, that's wrong. Good. Two significant digits, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's, it's already rounded once already. It's not in the text. It's not in the text. Text has three significant digits. So if you just make up your own significant digits, you can't do that. Well, would it not just be. No. Okay. This is a great. This is a great problem for us to have right now. Uh, what I want to be, I want to be very clear. There are two significant digit rules that you should have known from grade 10 and grade 11, and now in grade 12, or now in at least a 30 level subject, is that when I multiply and divide, <laughs> when I multiply and divide, <laughs> When I multiply and divide, it's the, the lowest number of significant digits. But when I add and subtract, I have to take the lowest number of decimal places. So if I, let's think about it this way. If I, if I went 25.2 and I subtracted 16.4, when I do this sub subtraction, there's only a difference of 8.8, .8, not 8.80. Do we know, is this zero? Do we know what digit this is? No. No, we don't. So our actual information is truly two significant digits. Now here's the deal. On a proper assessment, like the diploma exam or a unit uh, exam or something like that, the question will always say, write your three digit answer in the, the box or whatever, right? So it will always tell you three digits or two digits or four digits or whatever. Is that okay? It will always tell you that. Here, uh, yeah, I understand we're using a rule that you probably haven't thought of in a really long time, but this is properly two significant digits. 3.7 kilojoules. Now, if, if this was 16.40 and 25.20, then it would be 0 minus 0 would be three significant digits, right? When you put this into your calculator, just because your calculator spits out 8.8, .8, it doesn't mean it's not 8.80, .8, it just doesn't give you the 0. Yeah, Shelby. I guess you said for numerical, we would have to write 3.69 because it would ask for the no, no, no. I'm saying the question will tell you how many significant digits I, I want you to have. So it will specify. I, I'm not saying this question will ask you for three digits. I'm saying a question will tell you exactly how many significant digits for that specific question. And if it was in, then you would expect the 3.7. If, yeah, if this was two significant digits, uh, yeah, I would say 3.7. So your answer would be 3.7, right? Yeah. If it was multiple choice, I would never give you two answers that were rounded to different significant digits. I'm because I don't, I don't, I'm not testing you on significant digits. What? No, the diploma exam will not. The diploma exam will never test significant digits in a multiple choice question. And then in numeric response, it will always tell you how many digits it wants. So realistically, it's never going to ask you. It's never going to test you on significant digits. Realistically, it's it just can't. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Shh. Listen up. What does that mean? How much energy did the water, sorry, did the water gain or did the water lose energy here? Think of the context of the situation. Did the water gain or lose energy? If we have a candle 
and we have a fl that's a flame, whatever, deal with it. And we've got a cup, and there's some water in here. Is this water gaining or losing energy? It's gaining energy. And what is what's happening to the candle? Something is gaining energy. Something else has to be losing energy. What type? What type of energy is being gained by the water? Translational. So uh, otherwise known as kinetic energy. It, we don't know, Max. We don't know. We don't know if it's translational, rotational, or vibrational. But the combination of all three of those things gives us kinetic energy. Okay. So something can have a buttload of rotational energy, and something else can have a buttload of translational energy. But they can have the same amount of kinetic energy, and it relates to the same thing in real life. Okay. So we're gaining kinetic energy. What is the candle losing? Is the is the candle wax is the candle wax getting colder? No. 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 Is it getting? Uh, now I want to be very clear about this. It's not getting hotter. Is it getting hotter? No. It's not getting hotter. Okay. The candle wax itself. I agree. The flame is imparting temperature, imparting heat onto the candle wax at the top. But the candle wax is not getting hotter. So this thing is not gaining or losing any kinetic energy. It must be losing potential energy, right? So how much potential energy did the candle lose? 3.7 kilojoules. And we measured that. Did we measure directly the amount of energy lost by the candle? No, but we inferred that the energy gained by the water is the same as the energy lost by the candle. Because we're in an isolated system, right? There's a difference between a closed system and an isolated system. Um, chemical reaction has an enthalpy change of 4.8 uh, kilojoules. If all this energy is absorbed by 120 milliliters of water, that starts at 21 degrees Celsius. What will be the final temperature of the water? Go ahead, try this out. We're, just, we're using unit analysis. All you have to figure out is what do we want? That's it. What? No, we're going to talk about what that negative sign means here in about four minutes. I'm going to walk around handing something out, but it's just our newest notes package, so you don't have to do anything with it right now. Yeah, you want this? What? Okay. Here's this one. Pink. 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 Pink always works. Dude, I don't even care. Like, I, I, I'm just stealing turn. Isn't it? And then. You buy a charger off me? I know you can find one. And you like it? Yeah. You can buy your own. Where do you get this one? Uh, Amazon. Yeah. I'm not going to wait to do it. Pay for shipping. Well, 
that twenty-one Celsius is even. Is it? Okay. Yes, everybody wants to go staple it, and that's totally fine. But just, just quietly, quietly. So a chemical reaction has an enthalpy change of this much. If all the energy is absorbed by 120 milliliters of water at 21 degrees Celsius, what will be the final temperature? What I want to know, what I'm curious about, is what do you want out of this? You want final temperature, but in, in general, in general, all you care about is the temperature change right now. Would you agree? If you knew the temperature change, then you could just add it or subtract it to your temperature. So we're looking for the temperature change in degrees Celsius. Yes, I agree. The question has degrees Celsius in here. But what else, what else has degrees Celsius? The ratio of 4.1. The water, right? And so remember, if, if it's giving you kilojoules, well, then we can just do kilograms, right? So one kilogram degrees Celsius, 4.19 kilojoules. So it still takes, it still takes 4.19 kilojoules for every kilogram to raise it by a degree. And so what are all the units that we have to cancel out? Kilojoules. 4.80 kilojoules and kilograms, right? So 0 0.120 kilograms. Calm down. It'll be okay. Calm down. It's okay. Now, what I want to bring your attention to is that there's, there's a, a, a context, there's a contextual piece of information in here, and we need to look at it from two different perspectives, okay? Um, Denver, do you want to stand up here and be my, my partner in crime? Is that okay? Do you, want to be, do you want to be the chemical reaction or do you want to be the water? I'll be the water. You want to be the water, okay, calm down. So, if I'm the chemical reaction, read the question. Is the chemical reaction giving away heat or is it absorbing heat? Absorbing away heat. The chemical reaction is giving away heat. What's surrounding the chemical reaction? Water. Water. So the chemical reaction is giving away heat. Oh. <laughs> I know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to warn you, okay? The chemical reaction is giving away heat to the water. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. So as the chemical reaction gives away heat, what's absorbing heat? The water. Do you agree there's two different perspectives? Yes. From the chemical reactions perspective, am I losing energy or gaining energy? I'm losing energy. Is the water gaining or losing energy? It's gaining energy. Are we okay with that? I need... I need so I can take your energy back. Okay, <laughs> so from the water's perspective, is it gaining or losing energy? It's gaining energy. So is this going to be a positive temperature change or a negative temperature change? Positive. Positive. It's going to get heated up, right? So its temperature is increase is going to increase. How much is its temperature going to increase by? Nine point. Did you do it? Nine point what? Nine point five five degrees Celsius. No. Oh, okay. Kilojoules. Yeah. Kilograms, kilograms, kilojoules, kilojoules, and we're left with degrees Celsius. Okay. Now here's the problem. 
Uh, this question is just not where very well thought out. That's, that's the problem with this question. Let's assume that this is 21.00 degrees Celsius. Is that okay? It's starting out at 21.00. So let's, let's add 9.55 to that. So the final temperature, T final, is going to be 21 plus that, so 30.55 degrees Celsius. Is that okay? No. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, just because I wanted to, I wanted to take into account both the decimal places. Because if okay, all right, whatever. Let's not do that. Okay, let's not do that. No, whatever. So let's add nine point five five to this. You still get thirty point five five, but what do we have to round to now? You have to round to 31, because we need the nearest whole number. 31 degrees Celsius. Whatever, it's whatever you want. Okay, Max. If I change the, the kilojoules to joules, that uh, kind of the ratio of the joules and grams. Yeah, that's totally fine. If you, if you, because this would be, this would be 4,800 joules, and this would be 120 grams, and it's still the same ratio. They're equivalent fractions, right? So it's it, it it's whatever you want as long as, long as you do it properly, right? Yeah, Kate, really does anybody have any questions about that? Shelby. Okay, this might sound stupid, but why do you why are you adding the Celsius at the end and not putting it into your equation? Uh, because this this represents the temperature change. Right. So when when I add this much energy to this much water. It gains, doesn't matter what temperature it starts at, it will gain a temperature, an increase in temperature by 9.55 degrees Celsius. Okay, so, like, regardless, we're still trying to... Yeah, you want, you want to figure out the final temperature, but in order to know that, you need the initial and whatever temperature change. What if we started at 1,000 degrees? And then it would be 1,009 degrees now, or 1,010, whatever. Does, does that kind of make sense? This, when I add this much energy to this much water, it doesn't matter what temperature it starts at, it, it will increase in temperature by this much. So you have to figure out what the initial temperature was and then add it. Um, is that okay? Cool. I am. I am gonna scooch, and we're we're gonna start talking about your new notes package. Is eleven point one B? Question. Did I not give you guys notes packages? Obviously, I totally skipped everybody here. You were, you were watching me about 40 minutes, 45 minutes to talk about the molar enthalpy. I think we can do it if we just kind of buckle down. I want to um, get you doing some practice questions by the end of the class. The entire idea behind molar enthalpy is, is it's the exact same thing as molar mass, kind of. Molar mass represents how much mass in every mole of that substance. But that's, that's like a physical property of that substance. It just represents 
how much mass is being occupied by this many molecules. Molar enthalpy, remember, enthalpy just means what again? Change in energy, right? So this is the change in energy per one mole of that substance. That's all it means. We're still using Newton analysis. Except this time, instead of getting enthalpy, which is in kilojoules, I want you to look at your data booklet. Tell me what the, the units are for molar enthalpy. What page is that on? It's on page two of your data booklet. It's the first page after your periodic table. You want a periodic table? Delta T H. Oh, wait, no, I'm wrong. So what are the units for molar enthalpy? Kilojoules per mole, right? Molar enthalpy is all about kilojoules per one mole. Ah. I have two for some reason. Okay. I want to be very clear. The molar enthalpy of a reaction is very specific to a certain reaction. So for example, we could, we could, talk, about, um, we could talk about a specific compound. Uh, I don't know, let's talk about the compound um, oxalic acid. Whatever, it doesn't matter. That's the same coordinate. Yeah, it's a palindrome, right? Right, race car. <laughs> like race car. And, and, and the sentence, and the sentence, Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. Huh? There's another one huh? talking about. Oh, all rats have stars. Rats? What? What? No brains. What? <laughs> I'll think of it, get back. Straps, but it's been on my staff. Anyways. Oh. What is that? No. Does anybody has anybody ever heard this state of the sentence before? <laughs> Abel was I ere I saw Elba? No. No, Elba Elba is an island in the Mediterranean. Elba is an island in the Mediterranean. And that's that's where Napoleon was uh, outcast to after after the Napoleonic Wars. When he was kicked out of kind of the monarchy, not really monarchy, and then but the monarchy. The yeah, and then he came back with a vengeance. So. <laughs> also, uh, do he see no. God? Rats. Oh. Rats. Rats. Huh? Rats. 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 C God. What does that mean? A palindrome is the same forwards and backwards. Rats live on no evil star. Rats live on no evil star. Oh yeah, okay. Anyways, yeah, tangent. Okay, let's try this. No, 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 we're not gonna talk about more palindromes. What are they called? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> okay, the reaction. Let's talk about this reaction. Shh. I I could talk about lots of different things in regards to this particular compound. This particular compound is a liquid at room when it's pure. It's a liquid at room temperature. Now, I can take this and I can burn it. I can combust this thing. So what would be the combustion reaction for this su substance? I would take this, oh, and I would react it with oxygen, and what two things would it make? Carbon dioxide and water. And this, this reaction would have a very specific enthalpy. And we're going to use a very specific uh, combination of letters to represent molar enthalpy, okay? For formation, how would, how would this be formed from its elements? What elements do we need to form oxalic acid? Nope. We need, we need what? Water. Nope. 
We need hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. It's a formation reaction is a very specific definition. We define formation reactions to be something being made from its elements. Now, obviously, this isn't balanced, and I don't care to balance it right now. That's not what I want to focus on. But this is going to have a very specific enthalpy as well. Neutralization, when this thing gets neutralized, right? So that's like this thing. Is this an acid or a base? It's an acid, so we need a base to neutralize it, right? Um, so Na, H O O C C O O, plus water. It's going to have a very specific delta H. And the enthalpy of solution, that's when I take this pure substance and I make a solution out of it. H O O C C O O H liquid. How do I make a solution out of this thing? What do I got to dissolve it in? Water. Water. So H O O C C O O H aqueous. Every single one of these reactions is going to have a very specific delta H attached to it. And we're going to use the specific combination of letters to represent what reaction we are specifically talking about. What letter do you think we would use for combustion? C. C. So what I, what I would say, um, we want... The, it's kind of backwards, so it's the molar <laughs> enthalpy of combustion. That's the way you re read it backwards. What would, what would formation be? What combination of letters would I use? So the formation and it's the molar enthalpy of formation, right? Is this fairly straightforward? But it's just, it's telling you that this is what we're looking for, or this is what we want, or this is what we have, whatever. So the molar enthalpy of neutralization, and then the molar enthalpy of solution. Because we're talking about a chemical reaction, a positive enthalpy change refers to this system. A positive enthalpy change refers to this system gaining potential energy. While a negative enthalpy refers to this system losing potential energy. Right? So we could say delta, I don't know, uh, no. The molar enthalpy of neutralization for something, let's say it's positive 30 per mole. I just, I'm trying to get you to think about something, so just stick with me on this. Okay, is this chemical reaction releasing energy, or is this chemical reaction absorbing energy? Absorbing. It's absorbing energy, it's gaining energy. Where could it gain energy from? Whatever is surrounding it, right? So if this, if this was an aqueous solution, where would it gain its energy from? The water. The water. Okay? So here, this represents an increase in potential energy. So that means the temperature of the water will go down. I, I don't, hopefully that makes sense. If something's gaining energy, the other thing has to be losing energy. And it's, the system is almost always surrounded by water because that's it's, uh, it's something that we have abundantly available and that's how chemical reactions mostly happen in aqueous solutions. Okay, we went through a lot of information there. That's like a lot of gobbledygook, um, but we're going to build on that a little bit later on. Can I move on? Yeah? Okay. So... By way of an example, butane has a molar enthalpy 
of negative 2,043.9 kilojoules per mole, what we want to know is how much energy is released when 10 grams of butane is combusted. Now let me think about this for a second. Is this a stoichiometry problem? Is it giving you one substance and then asking about a different substance? No, no it's not. So you, because it's not stoichiometry, you don't need a chemical reaction right now. Okay, I want to be very clear about that. You don't need a chemical reaction. It's talking about one substance and you're sticking with that one substance. So we can just use unit analysis. What do we want out of this question? We want energy, and energy is always measured in either joules or kilojoules. Read the question. Does it say we're heating up water? So you cannot look at the specific heat capacity of water. Is there kilojoules anywhere else in this problem? Yes. So we're looking for the enthalpy change, not the molar enthalpy. We're looking for the enthalpy change measured in kilojoules. Well, we know every one mole of butane releases how much energy when it's combusted? Negative 2,043.9 kilojoules over one mole, right? And because it's talking about the butane, I will put the negative in there. This is from the butane's perspective. Okay, well, what's the only thing I have to cancel out here in order to get kilojoules? Moles. I have to cancel out moles, right? Do you know anything related to moles of butane? Molar mass. You know the molar mass. It's giving you a mass, so you need the molar mass. Go ahead and calculate for me the molar mass of butane. It's in your data booklet, right? But it is C4H10. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh man, I think it stinks. I ate some spaghetti and I got some spaghetti. I got some spaghetti. I got some spaghetti. Okay, so how am I going to write the molar mass of butane? Should I go 58.14 grams per mole? No. no. One mole weighs 58.14 grams. And what's the only other unit i got to cancel out? Grams. 10.0 grams. So moles and moles, grams and grams, we should be able to calculate that. Ah, uh, yes. Did you do it, Mark? <laughs> do you see that? I asked people to put in one teeny tiny calculation. You've got to put in three numbers into your calculator. People are sighing. They're rolling their eyes at me. 351.5. Three hundred and fifty-two. Three hundred and fifty-one point five. Blah 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 kilojoules, right? But what what was that? Three hundred and fifty-two. It would be three hundred and fifty-two because we need three significant digits. Digits. Um, wouldn't that one mole be considered a significant digit? The no, the one mole is a perfect definition, right? In in one mole, in exactly one mole. There is approximately 54.18 grams, or 58.14 grams. So 352 kilojoules. That's the worst 352 in the world. But hopefully you understand. Okay, and I want to be very clear: the negative and the positive doesn't it doesn't really mean anything right now because it's asking you how much energy is released. Uh, yeah, we're saying it's released. Okay, sure. But you could have just given me the quantity. And I'm asking you how much is released, and so a positive value would have been fine as well. As long as you understand negatives mean release, positive means absorb. Yeah. A student dissolves 21.3 grams of sodium hydroxide in uh, water, and it released 
541.2 kilojoules of energy. What is the molar enthalpy of solution for sodium hydroxide? So what are we looking for here? You're looking for the molar enthalpy of what? Sodium. Of solution for sodium hydroxide. And what is that measured in? What is molar enthalpy of anything measured? Joules over parentheses. No. Joules. Kilojoules. Kilojoules per mole. A molar enthalpy is how much energy? How much energy is either released or absorbed per mole of that substance? Okay, do you either have moles or have kilojoules? Shh. Do you have either of those things? Yeah. You have kilojoules. Where do you want to put them? Top or bottom? Top. Top. Okay. So 541.2 kilojoules. Yeah, over one. Now we want moles on the bottom. So in one mole, how many grams is there? What's that, Preston? Huh? Oh, I thought I heard you say something. You know, I thought, I, I thought it was an impression of somebody else. Oh, okay. Okay, hey, what, so far, what do our units look like? What are our units so far? Have we canceled anything out? No, so we have kilojoule grams per mole. What the hell is that? That's nothing. So what do we have to do? We have to cancel grams, right? 21.3 grams of this stuff. Grams and grams cancel, then we have kilojoules per mole. So what's the answer? One oh one six point three 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 eight. Yep. Bobby lost us. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So kilojoules per mole. There are. There is. Okay. Stop what you're doing. Look at the board. Just no straight up. Stop what you're doing. Look at the board. There are two reasons why this is the wrong answer. No, don't say them out loud. I want you to just take 15 seconds. There's one reason why this, there's one obvious reason why this is the wrong answer. Okay? There's one obvious reason. So think of the obvious reason. Sure, awesome. Okay, get it out of your head. There's another reason why this is the wrong answer. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. If you want to talk to your friend about it, that's totally fine. Are you giving us time to work on the bigger questions? I really have no relationship. Preston, what was that? You really what? I really got to a lot of like real one day. Okay, yeah. Well, once our 15 seconds is up in two seconds, and then you can go to the room. Okay, anybody get it? No. Yeah. Natasha? What is your what is the sign on your molar enthalpy right now? It's it's a positive. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning of the question. A student dissolves blah 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 in water and it released this much. That means negative 541. I don't know if you noticed, but I paused. I waited a long time after I wrote this value down because I wanted to see if anybody was going to catch that. And nobody caught, and that's fine because we're learning right now. It's not, you're not experts. <laughs> so this is negative something. Now, what's the obvious answer why this is wrong? Significant digits, right? So we need three, three significant digits, negative 1.02 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole.
<laughs> Good. Press. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Any any questions? Does anybody not understand why we did that? You very much understand. Okay. Well. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Um. A lot of the time, and I would actually, I would, I would, I would propose that the majority of the time, you are going to see a reaction. You're going to see a reaction, and according to this reaction, the way it's written out specifically here, this is the enthalpy of this reaction. So what I want to ask you, just really quickly, is this reaction releasing energy or absorbing re energy? So are its surroundings going to get hotter or colder? It's absorbing energy. The surroundings are going to get hotter. Okay. The reaction is releasing energy. So if the reaction is releasing energy, is the water surrounding it going to get hotter or colder? Hotter. Hotter. Now, in this case, there's not really a ton of water surrounding it. It's just air. So the air surrounding it would get hotter. Okay? Um, the molar enthalpy of this reaction for hydrogen is, what I want you to think about, what is... How much energy is being released in this reaction? 290, <laughs> 290 kilojoules. So, shh, please pay attention. For how many moles of hydrogen do we have reacting here, right here, right now? One. So for every one mole of this, we're going to release 290 kilojoules, right? For every two moles of this, we're going to release 290 kilojoules. So if we wanted the molar enthalpy of reaction, so the molar enthalpy of the reaction, what's molar enthalpy always in? Always measured? Kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. Do you see anything to doing with kilojoules in here? Yes, negative 290 kilojoules. Do you have anything to do with moles of hydrogen in this reaction? It says one mole. The coefficient is one, so over one mole. So what's, this is a trivial, you shouldn't need your calculator, right? But what is the answer going to be? 290 kilojoules per mole of hydrogen, right? You don't have to specify hydrogen, but I'm specifying hydrogen so you understand. Every mole of hydrogen that reacts is going to release 290 kilojoules. What about the molar enthalpy of reaction for water? It's kilojoules per mole. So we still have 290 kilojoules being released. How many moles of water are reacting here, or are, are in the reaction? Two. So two moles of water, right? So let's take 290 and divide by two. Um, okay, this is, it's just, it's just asking for the molar enthalpy of the reaction of this substance. So per mole, per mole of water, either used up or made, doesn't really matter. It's just saying, you know, we're making two moles, and for every two moles, we release 290 kilojoules. So if we, if we had one mole that was made it would only release 145 kilojoules, right? Yeah. I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> this, there's, there's a lot of us, this class is a lot of us just kind of getting used to the way uh, 
energy is being given to us or communicates to us, and we're going to have to kind of deal with that a little bit more tomorrow when Mr. Brown is here, because I'm not here tomorrow. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Do you know who Mr. Brown is? Old guy? No. Yes, the old guy. I sure hope he's not watching YouTube right now. Oh, yeah. 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 He's the mustachioed man. I love Mr. Brown. What? No, no, no. Hey, listen up. Um, if uh, if anybody makes Mr. Brown's uh, life um, more difficult than it needs to be tomorrow. I, I have absolutely no reserves scary. of absolutely raining hell on this entire class. What if it's just one person in particular? <laughs> then you need to keep that one person in check. As a class, you need to keep it. <laughs> then I will rain hell on that person in particular as well as the whole class. <laughs> what? I feel like you're not. Christmas. You feel like I'm not a scary person? <laughs> Have I ever yelled in? I've, I haven't taught most of you before. But in, no, no, no. But in, in grade nine, I definitely yelled at your class. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's funny. Yeah, well, some, some people get yelled at more than others. But that's okay. Okay. Let's put... Let's put everything we've learned together so far. So again, that context, that idea of gaining energy versus losing energy is going to come into play huge in, in the following kind of ideas. So let's think about this. Using calorimetry, we can identify the molar enthalpy of a reaction by determining how much energy is transferred to the water and as long as we know how much of this substance was used up or how much reacted. So as an example here, this is a, a calorimetry experiment. We're using a calorimeter, right? Ethanol has a molar enthalpy of combustion of negative 1,366.8 kilojoules per mole. So what mass of ethanol in here is going to be required to raise the temperature of this water by 20 degrees Celsius. What I, want, what, what I want you to think about is it's giving me water, but it's also asking me about this substance that's being consumed or reacted. What do you know about the energy lost by this substance and the energy gained by this substance? And it's equal. They're equal to each other. So there's going to be a phantom negative sign that shows up somewhere in this reaction, okay? What is the molar enthalpy of combustion of this substance? It's negative something. So is the ethanol releasing energy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the, the temperature is gaining energy, right? So we should be thinking of, because we're, we're figuring out, because we're trying to change the temperature of the water by positive 20 degrees Celsius, we should look at the water's perspective, okay? So that's, that's just, that's fine. What are we looking for in here? The mass of ethanol. Good. We're looking for the mass. And what is mass typically measured in? Okay, grams, and I, I'm going to say ethanol, so that's C2H5OH. <laughs> what do you know about the mass of ethanol? Do you see any grams in here anywhere? No, but what do you, what do you see about ethanol in here? I see moles of ethanol. So what does that illustrate to you? What do you need? You need the molar mass of ethanol. So let's calculate the molar mass of ethanol. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, why we're we're gonna see very quickly why I wrote grams of ethanol, and we're gonna find out why I wrote that in a second. So, uh, what do you want to cancel out here? You you want to cancel out moles of ethanol, right? So, where do you see moles of ethanol anywhere? No way on. I see moles of ethanol. Mole mass. Well, you just use the molar mass. I use, yeah, I, I see it in the combustion, the molar combustion of ethanol. So every one mole of ethanol, how much energy is released? Okay. Let's look at it from the water's perspective. Is the water absorbing or, or releasing energy? It's absorbing. So, so all of a sudden... I know that the ethanol releases energy, but from the water's perspective, the water is absorbing this much energy per mole. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So there's a phantom negative sign that showed up because of the context of the situation. <coughs> okay, what do you want to cancel out? Kilojoules. Kilojoules. Well, the energy lost by the fuel is energy gained by the water, right? Mm -hmm. So what value do you want to use here? The reason why we're not going to use a molar ratio is because is the ethanol reacting with the water in a chemical reaction? Oh, yeah, okay, good. Okay, that's fine. So kilogram degrees Celsius. Holy guacamole. Moles and moles cancel out. Kilojoules and kilojoules cancel out. What's the only two things I need? I need to multiply by the kilograms. How many kilograms of water is this? 0 0.375 kilograms. And then I also need to multiply by 20 degrees Celsius, right? So I apologize. I couldn't fit it all, all in one line, but hopefully you understand what's going on. So our kilograms and kilograms cancel out, our degrees and our degrees cancel out, and we should be left with a mass. Fire away. The, the temperature, this degree Celsius is always change in temperature. Always change in temperature. So the only way we can get rid of this degree Celsius is with a change in temperature. Do we have a change in temperature? So, like, so, the last equation we didn't add this ratio, so that's why we had to add this ratio, essentially, is what you're saying? Um, the last equation, when we did it, oh, that was, that was in the previous yeah. notes package, yeah. okay? Um, the reason why we didn't do it there is because we, in order, like, the again, the degree Celsius, that stands for change in temperature. So what we had to do is we had to calculate the change in temperature, then see, okay, if we started here and we're changing by this much, where can we end up at? It's, it's a two-step problem because this has to be change in temperature only. And a change in temperature, you need to either add or subtract from your final or your initial. Oh, I, I, don't know. I don't know any other way to explain it, unless, unless we sat down and talked about it. Okay, how much mass? Kelton, did you calculate it? Uh, no, I got 0.0194. 0.0194. You missed? No, 0.094. Okay. I got 1.076. 1.076. That, that sounds a lot closer. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. 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 Eight.
Oh, you, oh, in the calculator, people went 46.8. Yeah. Oh. How long have we been using calculators? 1.05? Five ninths. Boo them, yeah. Okay, if we, if we didn't, if we didn't take into account that negative sign, the negative of a negative, what kind of a mass would we have gotten? A negative mass. So it's fine, it's fine if when you're dealing with that mass as a negative, as long as you understand, uh, well, a negative mass means I must be using up the mass, that kind of thing, or, or another way of thinking about it is a negative mass can exist, but it does represent how much I need to use up. That kind of thing, yeah. So say uh, Mr. Bolton gives us a nice, nice test. And yeah. on this test, it has a question like that. Yeah. And it's like, show your work. Yeah. So if you do, do you use the negative? If you use the negative all the way up until the very end. And then you just switch it at the end. Yeah, that's right? totally fine. Because you you understand that <laughs> negative <laughs> sign has to disappear somehow. Right. Yeah. Okay. The temperature. Sh So far, our only technique has been unit analysis. Kelton, come on. Back. So far, our only technique has been unit analysis. All of these questions, they're all exactly the same. It's just you're either flipping this ratio or you're looking for something different. So the temperature of a 100 milliliter sample of water decreased from this to this when 1.87 grams of ammonium nitrate was dissolved. Find the molar enthalpy of solution for ammonium nitrate. Okay. What are you looking for? The molar enthalpy of solution. And what is molar enthalpy always measured in? Kilojoules per mole. Okay, remember it's kilojoules per mole of ammonium nitrate, right? So, what do you want? Uh, what do you want on top? Okay, let's read through the question. Do you see kilojoules anywhere at all? No. What do you have to use? You have to use the water, because the ammonium nitrate is the ammonium nitrate absorbing energy or is it releasing energy? Releasing. Oh, yeah. Because the water is getting colder, right? And in order for the water to get colder, something inside the water had to absorb that energy. Yeah, okay. So as long as we understand that, so again, the, the energy absorbed by the ammonium nitrate has to be the same as the energy um, uh, lost by the water. So I would say 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Okay, now I want to be very clear. The kilogram, what does that kilogram represent? Mass of... Mass, mass of the water, right? People are going to be so tempted to cancel out kilograms with grams of ammonium nitrate. You cannot do that. Right? This represents kilograms of water. So let's cancel out the kilograms of water. How many kilograms of water do we have? 0 0.1. 0 0.1000 000 000 kilograms of water. <clears throat> Can we cancel out the degree Celsius? Yes. What does the degree Celsius in this value represent? The change. the change. So as long as you have the change, then you can cancel it out. So it's 2.17? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2.17 degrees Celsius. So kilograms and kilograms and degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius. So we're left with kilojoules. 
we know we know how much energy was absorbed by the ammonium nitrate. Now we just need to divide it by the number of moles of ammonium nitrate. Do you know how many moles of ammonium nitrate there was here? No, but you have the mass. So you need the molar mass. What's the molar mass of ammonium nitrate? What, first of all, what's the formula for ammonium nitrate? I don't know. Oh man, Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna multiply. What do we need on top? What do we want on the bottom? We want moles on the bottom, right? So per one mole is 80.06. Is that what it was, 80.06? Yes. Grams. And so we need to cancel out grams on the bottom, 1.87 grams. So grams and grams, and we've got kilojoules per mole. Hopefully that makes sense. Kilojoules per mole. <coughs> And then what, once somebody calculates an answer for me, then just just give it to me later. Thirty eight point nine. Thirty eight point nine two. Nine two six. Blah 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 blah. Kilojoules per mole. So there's. I don't know, how many things are wrong with this answer? Only one. Uh, I, I don't know. So it should be three digits, right? 38.9 kilojoules per mole. <clears throat> but you have to get your negative or your positive from the context of the situation. Did our ammonium nitrate absorb or release energy? Absorbed. It absorbed it, right? So it should be positive. Strictly speaking, we, we should always have a phantom negative sign in here. Uh, was the temperature change positive or negative? Did it increase or decrease in temperature? It decreased. It decreased but that negative should have been canceled out by a phantom negative when we took into account it was the ammonium nitrate's perspective. So that's why it's positive. Whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Brown's going to be here tomorrow. I expect all of you to treat him better than you treat me. What? What? Treat him exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to be treated like a vet? Oh, what? 79 times 11. 79 times 11? Yeah. 790 plus 79 is 800 and. No, no, it's easier to do it.